Hello and good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good weekend. I'm Ethan Feller from Zach's Investment Research, and this is Momentum Mondays. As usual, we're going to start out this video. We're going to go over happenings in the market last week and see where that puts us today. And then we're going to take a look at what's going to be going on in the week ahead. We're going to take a look at the economic calendar. We're going to take a look at what's going to happen in earnings. And then I'm going to share with you a few technical trading setups in stocks with top stacks ranks. So we got a bit to cover, so let's get into it. So if anyone was paying attention to the action last week, they know it was quite a crazy week. Uh, the stock market made some pretty epic moves. Take a look here. This is the S&P 500 index, usually what we start looking at. Um, so starting last week, uh, I was talking about how, although the technical picture was getting quite ugly, as we were breaking down below many levels, uh, I thought that the market was looking extremely stretched, and I was expecting a bit of a technical bounce. Um, so we can see that <clears throat> Monday we got a green day, Tuesday it was another green day, but then we rolled over. And uh, you can see just how viciously the market bounced off those lows. We hit 4,100 in the S&P 500, and by Friday we were at 4,350, which is a 250-point rally. In, I mean, it was just three or four days that it happened. You can see the massive gap ups, this gap and runs. And so there's a few things that happened. Um, partially, I think there was a technical bounce in the market. Uh, things were oversold. And the sentiment was extremely bearish and extremely stretched. And we also had some more uh, bullish catalysts play out. And we had a few things to set the market up to go higher. So I think it, what initially started off the big rally was just positioning. Uh, people started to cover their uh, shorts. They had a short covering rally. And <clears throat> really what happened, uh, what really got it accelerated was we had the Federal Reserve, who spoke on Wednesday. Uh, Jerome Powell spoke about interest rate policy, and he gave a slightly more dovish uh, speech than he had been giving. So uh, market participants are now able to start to expect some easing policy. Uh, what really accelerated that, though, was um, we got a lot of employment data last week. Again, we're talking about this market where a slowing economy is actually going to be good for the stock market because if we have a slowing economy, that means we the Fed can start to ease off of interest rate hikes. So we got that. You know, we've been talking about watching for initial jobless claims. And I'm going to just show us the, the data that came out last week. Um, all A lot of employment uh, information was, was starting to show a, a slight rise in unemployment. We saw initial jobless claims came in above expectations. 217,000 uh, new claims last week versus 214 expected and 212 the week before. And U.S. non farmers payroll came in quite a bit below expectations, only 150,000 versus 170,000 expected. And it was nearly 300,000 last month. Uh, also, the unemployment rate came in at 3.9%, which was also a surprise above 3.8% expectations. So it is bizarre uh, a slowing economy is good for the stock market right now, but that's the position we're in. Uh, investors are excited to see that interest rates are going to be starting to go lower, and it's reassuring. So we can just take a quick look at the interest rate chart, and we were watching this consolidation here last week before, between 4.8% and 5%, and we broke down before, below 4.8%, and it was a pretty big sell-off in interest rates. So... It was, um, it's, it's a positive development for the stock market to see interest rates dive like this. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of players are hoping that 5% was that high. Now that the Fed is going to be a little bit more dovish, they're going to be talking about lowering interest rates. So I think there is some things to look forward to in the market. And, uh, as I have this whole entire, since I started Momentum Mondays, I remain bullish. Uh, I want to know that. However, the S&P 500 is basically flat since June. So uh, 
I I think I think this was such an aggressive move higher last week. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of rest this week. You know, we start to build out a sideways range. Maybe the market sells off a little bit. Maybe fill one of these gaps. Maybe fill another gap below here. Um, but I think we're going to, this is sort of this new uh, range that I'm going to be looking at. And I wouldn't be surprised to see us move sideways here before the move higher. But I think, again, the market is setting up for this Santa Claus rally <clears throat> into the year end. So I think investors have a lot to look forward to. And I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities. I want to share a few of the best technical setups that I'm going to be looking at. Uh, first, let's just take a look at what uh, is on the economic calendar this week. It's a pretty light week. Uh, there's not too much to expect. A few Federal Reserve speeches. There is a conference going on in D.C., the Division of Research and Statistics Centennial Conference. Uh, so a lot of them are going to be speaking at that. Uh, we got a Fed speech on Monday, trade deficit data on Tuesday, some more speeches, consumer credit also on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, more speeches. So uh, Jerome Powell is actually going to be giving a speech on Wednesday at that conference. Uh Probably going to be talking about monetary policy, so it's possible that uh, he'll slip in some interesting data. Uh, I think investors should expect more dovish rhetoric going forward. They're really getting what they want. The economy seems to be slowing down at a nice pace. Inflation continues to ease or continue to get more disinflation. So I think he's he's sitting comfortable, and he's going to maybe talk up a little bit more of that dovish uh, speak. Um, more Fed speak. And then, okay, we're going to be looking at this initial jobless claims. So the expectations are starting to edge up. It's 221,000 is the expectations for this week on initial jobless claims. So definitely keep a watch Thursday morning. Very important data. And then Friday, consumer sentiment. So it's a pretty light week data-wise. Um, plenty of earnings, though. Uh, we got Vertex Pharmaceuticals, NXP Semiconductors, Constellation Energy Group, uh, BioNTech, Ryanair, that's on Monday. Tuesday, Gilead, Uber, Occidental Petroleum, KKR, DR Horton. There's a lot of earnings this week, so keep an eye. This is the busiest week of earnings. You can see 291 on Monday, 381 on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we got 542. Big one is Disney, uh, some Chinese companies, Honda. Adidas, keep an eye on all of those. Then uh, Thursday, we got AstraZeneca, Sony, Allianz, Becton Dixon, Brookfield, Transdime, Lee Auto, Trade Desk. Those are all good ones to keep an eye on. And Friday, it uh, lightens up for American companies, at least. A lot of Chinese companies reporting. BYD, that should be an interesting one, the Chinese electronic uh, electric car company. Volkswagen. So uh, a lot of earnings on the docket this week. So it could, could, could bring some interesting action. And all right, let's get up and get into the trading setups. First one I want to look at is Applovin. It is a uh, ad tech company, a small but fast growing company. Not, not that small, $13.6 billion. We can see it has its axe rank one. It's got strongly upward trending earnings revisions. <clears throat> Good earnings per share forecasts, uh, growth forecasts, 20% over the next three to five years. It's got a premium valuation at nearly 50 times forward earnings. Um, but it's been a great stock this year, and it's been one of the leaders. So you got a really nice sort of cup and handle pattern here. The handle has been built out over these last couple of months. And just on Friday, you can see it started to break out of this flag. <clears throat> I think this one's pretty much good to go. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it maybe trade sideways, maybe retest this sort of little breakout level here. Because like I said, I expect a little bit of choppy action this week until the market can get going again. But again, these leading stocks, they can just get going even if the market trades sideways. So uh, at Blevin, this looks like a good one to uh, keep an eye on. Again, if we see it trade back below here, back below the level below say 37.50 and then below this level of support, I think, you know, look for other opportunities, but for now, App Love, and that's a good one. Very strong stock. Uh, the next one, a name we all know and love, 
NVIDIA. It, uh, it continues to set up nicely. It is the stock of the year to own. The uh, demand for semiconductors and their uh, data center products, AI, uh, it's not stopping. Uh, the trends are just continuing stronger than ever. So NVIDIA continues to enjoy a Zach's rank one. Uh, it's got its way up in the industry rank. Semiconductors are in the top 14% of the Zach's industry rank. Um, it's got, uh, people think it's got a crazy earnings multiple, but it's 42 times forward earnings. Uh, it's got earnings per share growth estimates in the low teens over the next three to five years. NVIDIA, it's just a great company. It's set up for these long-term secular trends in technology and uh, artificial intelligence. So the NVIDIA chart was actually looking pretty dicey. It was looking ready to break down. Uh, so we see now it's building out this nice flag here. It's getting to the top of this range, this uh, area of resistance. But before we had this nice bounce off this level of support last week, we can see we had a real, you got a shoulder here, a head, a shoulder. You got a head and shoulders set up. It looked like it was going to break down. And the stock started to break down below this $405 level, and it reversed. So it had a failed breakdown. Now, in technical analysis, when you see something set up for a short, it tries to break down and it fails. That's actually really bullish. So the bears had every opportunity in the world to try to get this thing to sell off, and it just couldn't. And, and the buyer stepped in aggressively, and... I think NVIDIA looks looks ready to make another move to all-time highs. Uh, so again, I'm expecting a little weakness this week, a little choppy action. So this range could build out sideways before we break out above this $452 level. Maybe this this comes down a little bit. Maybe it's next week and the, the stock trades sideways. Then we break out above 540 or something. But definitely keep an eye on NVIDIA. Again, this, this level is uh, 405 is a major level. So if the stock does go below there, Probably a bellwether for the broad market as well, but um, NVIDIA continues to look very conducive to higher prices. And the last one is a stock we keep talking about. I really think it's going to have an amazing year-end move. It, it's still holding up nicely. It's showing uh, nice relative strength, but Dell Technologies, it's another Zach's rank one. Nicely uh, trending earnings revisions. It's got nice style scores too, A in value and growth. Momentum, not so good. I don't know why it isn't because it's very strong. A and VGM. Uh, IT services are in the top industry rank. It's got good earnings growth forecasts. And this this is just what I love about it. It's got an 11 times forward earnings multiple. It's got a dividend of 2%. And it's a defensive name. And it's trading like a momentum stock. And that's just a perfect setup. So let's take a look at this. So we've been looking at this. Uh, this, so it broke out of this flag that we highlighted last week. Um, I think it's, it's building out a nicer, broader pattern here as well. And this is the one I'm looking at for this week. I mean, we already broke out of this smaller pattern here from the flag that we were taking a look at. And I think, okay, so the market just opened. So Dell is already breaking out above $70. And I think it's finally going to happen. I mean, it's held up much better than the broad market as we've traded sideways since sort of late summer. <clears throat> and uh, it looks ready to go. I mean, it's above $7. I would keep an eye on it. Like I said, expecting some weakness this week. So maybe it breaks below. We trade sideways and build out maybe a smaller uh, flag before breaking out, maybe later this week or next week. But again, these are the three leading stocks in the market, I think. They have the best setups going forward. And I think the broad market is going to carry these leading stocks higher through the end of the year. That's it for today, folks. I hope you found this information useful and valuable. If you did, please sign up for the YouTube channel, like and subscribe. And if you want more information from Zax, go to zax.com slash